All right, so we're going to start routing. The one thing I want to point out to you guys before we start is to be aware of some of the power connections. So we're going to do the signal pins first and then we'll do the power. But to make things easy, we always make our ground plane to get rid of some of the air wires and to show how things are going to be connected. So if we do show ground, we'll see where all the ground connections are that we're going to have to make. And then we also show the noisy ground. We see the connections here too. So if you kind of notice, at least for the noisy ground, we kind of have them all in a location. It's not the best of placement but it, it'll work for us and so you kind of see in this region and we're going to want to keep noisy ground and ground isolated and the way we'll do that is with power planes as we showed very briefly in the remote but it's going to be more important here so we're probably going to have a noisy ground plane right around here which will be isolated from the ground except for at this two-part junction or this net bridge which will be as close as possible to the battery so that the reference of ground will be as true to zero as possible and then for the rest of the space or the inverse of that it will be where our normal ground is and that'll be our quiet ground so let's go ahead and start by making a polygon for our ground we're going to just make one on the bottom but we'll also make one on the top too but the ground one the one on the bottom is the most important name it ground gnd and if you do rats and you rip it up some of our ground connections should have disappeared not the ones on the top layer but the ones on the bottom that are showing connections so let's do and make one on the top i'm going to cheat and just copy our polygon and then put it on top of it and then just type info click on one of the polygons and we'll change the layer to top and then we do rats we should see both layers so here's the bottom one Here's the top one. And then you can see now that the thermals are kicking in and you can see that the grounds are connected. If you rip them up, then you should see some of them disappeared. And so they're actually being connected from top to bottom via the pads on some of our through hole components. Cool, so we didn't eliminate very many air wires, but hopefully it looks a little bit less overwhelming. But again, probably didn't help that much. So let's get started then. Let's knock out some of these power connections using 30 mil traces. In fact, we can probably go bigger, maybe 50 mil. That looks good. Nice thick trace there. Very short, low impedance. Let's do our VBAT one. 50 mil is a little too big. Let's do 30. In general, that's good. Let's line this guy up. Good. Let's line these guys up as best as we can on the input side, the output side. And then we want to move it out of the way of the switch so that the DRC stops yelling at us. Let's go ahead and make the appropriate connections. So the reason why I'm routing this way is because we're going to need to make our VBAT connection not just to this regulator but also to the 6 volt regulator input. And so pretty much we'll connect this here and make that straightforward connection and then we'll carry this one up to here. We'll make a slightly smaller trace. I don't like when they stick out of the pad. 20 mil seems to do fine. And then we'll make a 6 mil connection. This is the enable or shutdown or feedback, whatever it is. And it's not going to be carrying much current at all. Probably only a couple of milliamps or microamps. Let's finish the connections here. So let's route maybe 20 mil. Maybe 25 mil would have been fine too. And then again, 6 mil for this guy. Looks good. We'll go ahead and add some vias here later. This guy has an exposed pad, so it's using it for thermal dissipation. Any of the heat from the current being pulled into the servo will be dissipated through this and through the rest of the PC board, and the PC board as a whole will actually get warm. So that's a really nice feature to have. A lot of high power H bridges have that. All right, so let's do the rest of these connections. So we routed 30 mil here, but we also need to make some more connections that will lead up to our motor. So let's go ahead and do those. So I'll start with 30 mil again. We can go right along the edge of the wall. Let's put these in its final location. Let's put this down some. Line this guy up with this. Looks good. And then we're gonna need to make this connection. So let's make sure that we get a nice route here. Way too big. It's touching the other pad. The DRC will yell at us. Let's try 20 mil. Still might be too big. Yeah, too big. 15 mil. It's probably gonna be 10 mil, but yeah, 15 is still too big. 10 should be fine. Yeah, that looks good. Before we actually make that explicit connection, let's make sure that these are aligned as best as possible just to make everything symmetrical. Let's do these traces. And then we'll take advantage of these larger pads and connect them with 30 mil trace. And then finish the appropriate connection here. So we have this little nub, we can push it to this side or we can push it over here and maybe not go along the wall. Let's go ahead and do that. It'll make it look nicer. We'll come back to this soon. If you wanted, we could probably push this closer. We can probably push the whole thing closer over here. Let's go ahead and actually do that. Again, the shorter the routes, the better, especially for power. There we are. Okay. 
Let's see, what can we do next? Let's knock off some easy ones with the microcontroller. Let's go ahead and do the crystal next. So I like to make sure my crystal is as symmetrical as possible or right between the two pins it needs to connect to. And then we can move it out. Since we can, we will put the crystal as close as possible to the microcontroller. There we go, just out of the DRC. These are connecting or touching a little bit. So let's go ahead and move the whole thing here. Just a click. Again, if possible, to kind of keep the symmetry, make sure that these are perfectly in the center, and it seems they were, so that should be fine. Let's go ahead and make these connections. A 6 mil route is fine. I'm going to move them out a little bit, and then finish the connection. Massage it out if you want to, and then make this connection. Let's go ahead and do these capacitors next. Place them as close as we can. It's okay, these are close. They are, as long as we're outside the T keep out, it should be pretty easy to solder and they won't overlap. It's gonna make these connections. We'll try and use as big as we can of a route trace. So let's connect one to each of the capacitor. That looks good. For the ground, we won't worry. We'll go at the end and add a bunch of vias right outside of these so that they can jump to the ground plane as quick as possible or in as short as possible. Let's go ahead and position our Bluetooth and our FTDI. So we're going to end up putting some traces along the top, so I don't want to put it too close. However, we should be able to put it comfortably there. So similarly for our FTDI, try and make them symmetric as possible. Not terribly important, but always fun and nice to have. Okay, that should be good. Let's line up the, the air wire with this connection. This will need 6 mil. In general, we'll make all our signals 6 mil routes. Reset will go somewhere over here. We'll do that soon. We can push this pretty darn close. We'll be missing out on some of the printing aesthetics, but it's not that big of a deal. We can go ahead and make this connection. Looks good. All right, this guy is as close to the DRC as possible, or as close to the microcontroller as possible. We'll maybe move it down later if we can. Let's go ahead and do the servo next. And we're gonna have a couple traces going through here. We may have to push it out a little bit more later, but we'll leave it like that for now and see what we have to do when we get to it. Make the capacitor as close as possible. And then this whole group, let's push it up a bit. We may have to move it back down soon. Actually, I want to leave it where it was. I want this to be as straightforward of a connection as possible. And then on that note, let's go ahead and move our six volt regulator as close to the servo. It's the only thing powering the servo. If we could have, we would have just used the battery, but this one is rated for up to six. And these things get very hot. They pull a lot more power, even for little tiny guys. So we'll have a really straightforward connection here. So let's do 20 mil here. Let's finish our V bat here that we destroyed. So we did some of our power ones, but we only did the ones that were very close together. Usually I do the power ones last, but since a lot of them were flowing very easily, it kind of set itself nicely. Now let's start doing some of the signal pins and for the remaining powers that we need to connect, pretty much the five volt to everything else. As you can see, it's kind of going everywhere and all over. So we want to do our signals so that those have as minimal vias as possible. It's okay if our powers do. Again, we want to minimize it where possible, but we should be okay to do the signal signals and then via in and out the power pins. Let's go ahead and start with the Bluetooth. So we'll make all these connections 6 mil. That should be fine. TX is a straight shot from here. Or excuse me, RX. Well, RX of the bike controller. TX from the Bluetooth. Okay, if we look at TX, we still gotta make one more connection over here. We'll do that in a moment. Same with RX. We have to make the connection here with FTDI. And then we have reset as well. So let's go ahead and start with TX. We'll go right up against the wall. We're actually going to dive down through here. We don't want to break up the ground where possible. We're having trouble going through here, so we've got to move it down a little bit more. Let's go ahead and keep rounding the reset. And then TX actually going to go through this capacitor. Let's go ahead and finish RX. So it's kind of trapped in here, so we're gonna make a route on the bottom, go along the edge of the wall. All right, next we can do our serial peripheral interface connections. 